This is Uthred Ronaldson, and this is Conflict of Nations World War Three, Day 13, and I'm playing as the Philippines. So it's uh, Day 13, and we are now on the uh, 18th hour of uh, Day 13. So there's a lot of things that happen, and... Um, I'll be reporting um, the details and the things uh, that happened since day 12. And, uh, okay. Anyway, let's start, guys. So, we are now right here. Uh, China has been, uh, um, let's say, um, China has been uh, neutralized. And, uh, there's no more um there's gonna be no more comeback here for china as uh all of his um cities has been conquered including his uh, occupied city of urum Ki. so there's gonna be no way for china to um get back here on the game uh russia has also been um eliminated i mean has been neutralized in this game Okay, so let me just uh, recall um, the things that have happened. So we have um, so we have a battle that happened here in Zengzhou. Okay, let me check and see the recording. Okay, so this is the uh, battle that happened in uh, Zengzhou with. Uh, um, so remember that there was a uh, stack of four units in uh, Shanxi province. Yeah. All right. So that video that I showed you is uh the video um of uh the events that happened. So basically uh China have attempted a breakout because if you can remember day 12 there's a um an army right here in Shanxi four units with so that's a that's a um one motorized or three motorized infantries and one um armored recon uh that was trapped here in Shanxi. So yeah, we basically had to eliminate them and uh I've sent my forces to eliminate those uh, army right there. It's it's not much of a battle. I didn't lose any casualties. I also use my air force to um add, to add some damage to uh the uh the enemy so um the battle just happened um in just an hour or just one attack yeah so it didn't last for an hour actually so okay and now we are about to annihilate the russian forces that was sent to relieve china so Okay, so Russia have also failed to uh, help his ally uh, China to recapture its territories. And now both players, Russia and China, are now out of the game. So, okay, so again, we're now clearing this up. And uh, I am not expecting any major resistance here. And um, as you can see, New Zealand have also um, conquered South uh western china right here the remaining provinces will be conquered by new zealand and uh, i got majority of the cities uh chinese cities and um, now i am at war philippines is at war with mongolia as well so we'll be uh, clearing this uh, area right here and we'll be taking the rest the remaining mongolian provinces and mongolian homeland cities and then possibly we'll push to uh, russia but uh, the thing is that Kazakhstan is actually um, doing well here against Russia. Kazakhstan is um, marching forward and inland into into uh, the heartland of the Russian territories. So Russia have actually just left the game. And so we are expecting a fall right here. Now if Russia will fall, then that means there's no major um 
major opponent here in this theater unless we push further into Europe. So, okay, so we're just gonna I'm still sending forces uh, forward. Um, we're still gonna finish up with Russia, but I think I'll have to uh, rebuild my forces and face the United States. I think that's something that uh, I have. I now have to uh, uh, focus on because I think that's going to be the new theater of war. That will be the next theater of war. Right. Because this one has lost uh, three hit points. Almost three hit points. Okay. So we're going to clear this up with our planes. So I'm using uh, one naval uh one naval patrol one heavy bomber and then three air superiority fighters so if you stack them all up together it will provide you with uh, uh stats capable of eliminating planes as well as ground troops ground units as long as um it it won't uh have any it won't uh have any um uh, anti-air okay so so we got the uh, heavy bombers now so this will be my first time utilizing this unit the heavy bombers i'm not used to using them because uh, in terms of strikes or in terms of uh, bombing raids i normally use um, striker strikers so this will be the first time now the bombers has a lot of advantage compared to the regular striker jets uh, first is the range so heavy bombers actually have um, per part yeah further range so if you will notice right here the range is uh, totally um, out of uh, totally very different so it's almost double the range of the regular fighter jets and um, aside from that the the damage that it has so 8.5 and if you will see here the stack here has a damage of 14.3 so that's definitely enough to eliminate any major um, stacks like this one here so this one will um, will be eliminated probably by uh what um five more strikes five more um raids this one this uh army will fall so okay and then uh, indonesia is still um pushing so he encountered some resistance here um versus india mostly in Jaipur and New Delhi and then he's now about to capture Ahmedabad all right so India um, regardless whether this is an active or a computer will always put up a, a good fight will always put up a fight so let's see so this might um, take one yeah one more day possibly uh, tomorrow or day 14 I think this one will end by day 14 before day 15 okay all right and then australia okay australia is now moving against kenya but uh my friend uh Ayman is not um as active as uh we want to be but that's fine he's he's doing good and uh now he's able to capture two Kenyan cities so he's doing fine here he'll be able to um, to be able to this is good also because uh, he's securing the cities of Dar es Salaam and Mombasa now once he moves on hopefully once he moves on those cities will be pacified and will be protected from any rebellion and now Cameroon is also doing good here eliminating DR Congo Okay, so this one here will be a very good move. Once DR Congo has been eliminated, they can go for can um Australia will be safer and I think they can work together and conquer 
uh, Kenya. But um, yeah, I think this will be easy, easier. Kenya will be easier. Now they will have to prepare for South Africa. Co um, Cameroon will also have to prepare for South Africa. Okay. And then, of course, New Zealand, who is doing pretty good. He has uh, a number of ships. He also has subs, so this one is doing really good with um, naval power surpassing mine, as well as, I believe, even uh, Indonesia. So, basically, um, New Zealand's navy is uh, is powerful. Yeah, he, he has a powerful navy right now. So, look at this. Right? So, level 1 frigates, level 1 destroyers. He also has uh, um, submarines. Attack submarines. So, this, this is really good. And... Uh, he is active, so I think uh, if um, I think uh, this will be a good one for New Zealand because uh, we will be able to ask him to provide some assistance. He is also a team player in, when it comes to uh, asking the player to help set forces. Um, he responds, so I think uh, New Zealand is a good uh, player, also um, good team player. So. Um, as at this point, I can say that um, our co uh, the chances of our coalition winning here is at around 80%. The only um, possible reason why we will lose is if we will lose good players like Indonesia. If Indonesia will go for to a different um, coalition, as long as I have Australia... Um, we can take out the Indonesia if needed. Also, the um, African Union is no longer a coalition. It's no longer an existing coalition. Right? So, imagine that we're able to eliminate one coalition. So, yeah, Axis Power, the Axis Power Coalition is actually the second most powerful coalition. And uh, I think that that coalition actually posed a threat against us if only they were able to play it right. And the thing is that even though they lose, uh, they lost uh, players, they can actually recruit other players from other coalitions like this one, the American SUD. This will now be the second um, coalition in the game. And I think this one will also pose a threat. Now, this coalition here, if they can recruit Colombia, Spain, Italy, if they can include those cities, I think they have to uh, kick out Mexico. So the U.S., Brazil, Colombia, Spain, and uh, Italy, and also there's, there is Serbia. So if all those um, players will join together, I think they will have a chance of uh, winning this game. And um, all they basically just need to do is to eliminate. Um, I think they will have to eliminate, uh, yeah, Indonesia and me, and the Philippines. So as long as they can neutralize those countries, they have a big chance of winning. I think Cameroon also. So um, Cameroon is also a good player, and we are all together in one coalition, and that's the reason why our co coalition has uh, better chances of winning this game. But we're just on day 13 and uh, we're expecting this to go on until day 60. So there's still a lot of things that could happen. So, okay. So, yeah, there's that's it. Um, that's uh, what's happening. And um, Cameroon still pushing for DR Congo. Um, Indonesia had uh, conquered Oman and is pop possibly going to go for Saudi Arabia. So... Yeah, I think he did this to secure Saudi Arabia because this one is a strategic position. Once you have this, you can position yourself. Um, you can get a strong position um, in the Mediterranean and a lot of countries can be conquered from the Mediterranean. So, yeah, I think this one is okay. 
Now, if once he secure this, he'll go for Saudi Arabia and then into Iraq and then Iran. So it's like a hammer and anvil with wherein they will be attacking from both the west and the east. So west from Saudi Arabia and then east from India. Then to close into Pakistan, Afghanistan, and then Iran. So that's a lot of project. That's a lot of things. Uh, that's a lot of um, uh, um, conquest for Indonesia. And that may take some days. Now, as for the Philippines, this one is a this one is a win already. We're just cleaning up uh, China, and for me, I'm going to Mongolia, and I will possibly push for the mainland uh, Russia. Although uh, New Zealand is already um, making its move, but I may have to go with him here to finish Russia and then possibly to go inland um, further into Europe. But this is something that I have to consider, and that is uh, preparing for the United States. The U.S. now has um, level 3 naval bases in Los Angeles. Let's check that again. So he has a level 2 naval base in Los Angeles and a level 3 naval base in San Francisco. Both are capable of producing ships. So we are expecting that we will be facing some destroyers and frigates from the United States. That means we also would need to build up. Now, I already have Guam and um, will be, yeah. I will be preparing for the United States and that means I'll have to send troops to Hawaii. We'll conquer Hawaii and then we'll stage uh, an invasion also in Alaska and then into Canada. So yeah, that's gonna be our route. So we cannot so I'll I will uh, conquer Hawaii use my navy Navy to bomb it and then occupy it with my um, ground troops and then my Navy will push for the uh, United States West Coast to bomb Los Angeles, San Francisco and Portland and um, to uh, eliminate and um, disable his ability to uh, to produce Navy. So that's our plan. I think we have to do that as quickly as possible. I think we can do that while pushing into Russia because we have enough troops. Now, um, I have several troops right here who's not being who's not in use. They're just patrolling and guarding the uh, the coast of China, but um, they're basically useless as of now. So, I need to um, have at least one stack with destroyers in it. So I can attack Hawaii. So two stacks I think will be uh, doable here. Two stacks with uh, destroyers and frigates. But they need, um, yeah, the best is to have at least four to, to dominate the seas here. Because um, yeah, that's a lot of, um, it's a lot of coast to cover. So yeah. So we've been planning for the U.S. since day 12. I think uh, we have uh, opened this up since day 11, the possibility of attacking the U.S. So now planning for the U.S. attack has been going on for two days. And I think the execution of this one will might, might start on day 14. But um, before that happened, I need to have uh, destroyers. So I'm going to have to wait for my destroyer nine hours before the research completes so i'll have time to um to uh, accumulate more components okay so destroyers and then once we have the destroyers if we can create one stack i'll send that stack here into uh, hawaii Okay, so, okay, Brazil has conquered uh, both Chile and Argentina. Very good. So, once that has been, that's, once that is complete, 
then these countries here can now focus on attacking either Asia or Oceania or Africa. There, so yeah, there's still a lot of things that our opponents can do. They are divided, yes, but we still have a lot of days, a lot of time to play the game. So if there will be a leader in the opposition who can unite the opposition against us, they will have a strong chance of winning this game and us losing the game. So, but yeah, we just have to be prepared. But in terms, in uh, in reality, um, chances of us winning is really huge. So, I hope that um, uh, you know, um, if you're watching the video, I hope that uh, somehow you are entertained and uh, learning a lot about the gameplay. And uh, I just hope that uh, you're enjoying this also. So, okay. So that's it for today. And uh, I'll see you all on day 14. It's calm.